All right, welcome everyone. I think you're on mute, Matt. Thankfully, because I was mumbling to myself, so <laughs> I'm okay on that. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, good, good to see everyone I know, uh, or you may or may not know, I think uh, uh, Chairman Garvin uh, is is disposed of for this evening, and uh, uh, Councillor Penny Jordan uh, may be able to join us late, but she was getting jammed up at, at work, so if she, she may join us already in progress if she can. Uh, so... Uh, Looking to uh, have hopefully you know fairly productive and a, a, a good brief discussion regarding the long term uh, or the existing debt service as well as uh, anticipated debt retirement and uh, at least on from the town side uh, municipal capital projects that are anticipated to be in the next uh, in the next window of time uh, you know within the next let's say two to seven years uh, type of window uh, what we're looking at uh, so folks can uh, can have a a fairly solid picture as to what uh, to anticipate at least the town's capital needs uh, going forward, as well as looking at what the school's capital needs is. And, and part of the hope from tonight's meeting, or one of the end results is that uh, going forward, both the council and the school board will be able to have an ongoing discussion and an ongoing dialogue relating to uh, the capital needs as well as debt planning and uh, trying to keep an eye as to what, uh, you know, what the burden and the, and the level of debt that the town is carrying, as well as uh, when it will be retired as well in, in, uh, in addition to the impacts on taxes and things along those lines where it ends up impacting the taxpayers. It may be a school project or maybe a town project, but ultimately it ends up being a taxpayer funded project in many ways. So, and there's uh, one bill that goes out under the town of Cape Elizabeth's name and one tax rate. So uh, we, are, we are partners going forward. And uh, so that's, that's just one thing that uh, you know. It's good for us all to be all to be aware and uh, understand the timing of how things will come on and come off. Uh, so that's part of the desire of this evening uh, to go forward with it. I, I know uh, for many of the town councilors, you'll find that uh, there may be a bit of a repeat performance from uh, our uh, meeting on May 27th, when we had a discussion regarding at least from the, the town capital side. So there you know, there will be elements here that you will. Uh, not be surprised by because I've already spoken of them in the past, but uh, a lot of that information we did post for this evening and it's, it, it is linked on the website. Uh, so the items that we have are the debt retirement and anticipated near term capital uh, needs of the town, uh, the school debt service, uh, the overall debt service schedule and the sewer and the town debt service schedule, as well as the sewer debt service schedule. So uh, those are kind of our, our, our three big areas that we do have debt service that is impacting on the on the town's town's debt service now uh, in the past we've talked about bond rating and uh, it can put you to sleep or it can get you excited it all depends upon uh, the, the cut of your jib for lack of a better way to put it so uh, currently the town has uh, an exceptional uh, a bond rating we have the highest that the town for, for a town of our size and stature can attain uh, so that is a very good thing it, uh, it impacts the rates by which uh, by which the town borrows money when it does need to borrow funds. Uh, so that's been very good. And as John Q uh, has has explained in the past as well, uh, it's due to our size that we don't have uh, an even higher bond rating. If we were a larger sized community, uh, we would still have the top uh, the top rating. So that's a very uh, a very nice element to have uh, financially for the town. So. Uh, part of that is based on our performance and uh, performance to date, our assets, the town's municipal value, uh, our, our, and many other factors that come in. Also, the level of debt that we currently carry is, is in comparison to the level of our uh, municipal valuation or the state value, uh, where they have us at in, in excess of, I think, of $2.7 in value, and our debt service being where it's at, uh, we have, uh, we're, we're in exceptional shape when it comes to that. So that contributes to our bond rating as well. So uh, that being said, uh, the first the first item that we have uh, linked on your uh, for tonight's document, and I don't know, can I share a screen? Yeah, I just made you a co-host, Matt, so. Oh, thank you so much. That, that's great. I'll, I'll just gonna make sure I bring up the right screen here. You don't need to 
see uh that's your my emails you don't need to see that so can everybody see that uh, is like a green box <laughs> uh, spreadsheet that we do have okay. yes but it needs to be bigger yeah okay. can make it bigger. i i am more than happy to do that just a couple couple clicks and we're back in yes. business how's that is that more legible yes, yes. awesome thank you uh i i have to do it myself so uh, so what you'll end up finding is that uh, there are this what this box or what this spreadsheet ends up showing is that the, you know there are, they identified years of of retirement of bond payments. So uh, we have a number of projects that we have identified. So in fiscal year 22, for instance, uh, we have a, a bond payment of 78,750. Uh, primarily, that is for uh, the community center bond, and that was. That was basically a 20 year old bond uh, started here uh, or that bond started uh, the, in the year that I started here and it's being retired this year. So uh, that'll be coming off the books as well as a copy or lease that we had uh, that came along those lines. So uh, as you'll notice by looking at this sheet, as you go by uh, across left to right, you'll end up noting that there is a um, uh, the fiscal year savings. So in, next, in this year's current fiscal year, we will make this last payment. And then for next year, that 80, 88,600 effectively will be coming off from our debt uh, debt requirement for payment. So that, and and then as we go down through the spreadsheet, you'll notice that that, that takes further or you know further and further impacts. So you'll see in fiscal year 23, uh, that'll be the fifth year that we at least had financed the the, the ladder truck. Uh, we've had it for three years, but we bought it on a five-year lease, and it just takes time for us to. To, to make those machines. So that will be retired next year. So that's 318,000. And so you'll see that 318 savings by fiscal year. But then over the next two years, you'll see combined savings that pay off. So it, in two years, we'll have the equivalent of just over 406, almost $407,000 in combined savings that will come off as debt service is retired. And then it, it flows from there as well. Uh, you'll notice that this public works equipment in fiscal year 24 that'll be coming off. Uh, the turf field will be coming off in fiscal year 25. It seems like it was just last year that we were discussing the bond for the turf field, but that's because we were. Uh, but by using that as a five-year, as a five-year bond, uh, you know, lease lease purchase, uh, that has worked, you know, to allow us to allow uh, stable payments and less and lesser impact on the taxpayers year to year over year, and then also retiring a little bit quicker than it would be if you had bonded something for say. 10, 15, or 20 years. So, uh, so as, as we go through that as well, uh, this, the next year near term, a uh, couple items that we have is the retirement of the sewer bond. And then finally, the town center bond will all be retired. So by fiscal year 20, 28, uh, the town, uh, but for fiscal year 29, so basically seven years from now, we'll have close to $900,000 in funds that would, that otherwise we wouldn't have to be paying cumulatively over the past seven years. So uh, that's a good problem to have, um, and they've all, and many of those have been long-term needs that the town had financed via the bond uh, bond approach, and uh, and so that's met the needs for that. At the same time, there are needs that will be coming forward uh, that that will end up having to also come back onto the uh, combined debt level for the community. So uh, that would be in the lower half of this spreadsheet as well. And these are some of the items that we've noticed. Of, of larger ticket uh, affairs, for lack of a better term to describe them. Uh, the big one, of course, is the Shore Road uh, project that we have uh, currently in this year's budget uh, for planning and engineering for that. And this would be a, a partial full depth reconstruction on part of Shore Road, as well as uh, uh, pedestrian improvements and safety improvements uh, for, a good, for the entirety of it, and then the rest of it being uh, resurfacing and uh, making improvements to the surface there that are much needed as well. The anticipated cost on that would be $5 million and the debt service on that would be currently estimated at $313,000 with a 20 year bond. Uh, you could go longer than that. Uh, it's probably best to go 20 at the most because uh, it's been about 30 years since the last time uh, that work was done and we're a few years beyond when it should have quite frankly been, uh, been considered, but this is a substantial uh, substantial undertaking similar to Scott Dyer Road that we just completed uh, in three phases over the past three years, uh, Scott Dyer Road and Hill Way. So uh, that's, that's one item that we do have identified there. 
Uh, and then uh, Mitchell and Spurwink, there's a cul culvert there that will need to be replaced. Uh, and that's a fairly expensive uh, proposition uh, to do that just because it's a, it's a, it is a major, it is a major culvert that is a, uh, that currently holds up the entrance to Hobstone. Uh, so there's a, there's a, you know, there's a lot playing with that. Uh, we do have potential or there will be a need in the future for an expansion to the cemetery uh, because uh, not to be insensitive, but the cemeteries fill uh, up and we run out of space. So you do need to plan for that long, those long-term needs for expansion of, of, of a way to take care of our deceased. And then uh, there's also, at some point in time, we will be looking at a sewer expansion. And uh, that's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Uh, Cape Elizabeth has some of the highest sewer rates uh, around. Uh, part of that is due to the level of uh, subscribers. And uh, if you have more subscribers, your rates will ultimately go down, but you cannot add subscribers without expanding your network. And uh, there are areas of town that would that would that would come to uh, that expansion would come to and be a very very good project to undertake and a great service to those need, those who may need it. Uh, part of that would be off Fowler Road and then the, uh, the the Bayberry neighborhood uh, and through that different section of town. Um, so that's something that we've been looking at and long range planning uh, for that, and that could probably possibly be in fiscal year 28 and surprisingly in fiscal year 27 the sewer bond is retired. So uh, you would end up finding that that could be an, uh, a limited net impact to the taxpayers as well, uh, as well as to the ratepayers because that bond, bonded debt will be coming off as well as there, there are service fees that do help uh, pay that as well as the sewer fund that we have been maintaining for years. Uh, that's kind of, a, uh, kind of an enterprise fund, if you will, that helps pay for the sewer, sewer costs as well as uh, maintenance of that system. And then uh, finally, uh, the item that we may be looking at in the future, uh, actually two, two last items that we have, actually one, one additional one, so three probably, possibly four, sorry, as they come to mind, Sawyer Road sea level expansion. Uh, there's an area, if you go between the towns of Cape Elizabeth and Scarborough, uh, outer Sawyer Road, uh, everyone's familiar with the very flat area that is prone to overtopping. Uh, that's been identified as uh, as a as a prime candidate for the impacts of sea level rise. Uh, it's been a problem for a long time as it does overtop. Uh, we do need to work with the town of Scarborough uh, on that and and try to figure out what the solution would be to to solving that problem. Be it uh, discontinuing the road and removing the surface and uh, and what is there and and coming up with a, a, a solution that happens to uh, work for both towns or other solutions that may take place as well. Um, obviously, ending it and 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 rerouting traffic would probably it would impact Scarborough to a greater degree than it would Cape Elizabeth, uh, but that's something that we, we will have to have ongoing discussions in future planning with Scarborough on that. Uh, additionally, as the great as the needs uh, meet the town for fire uh, rescue service personnel, uh, as towns have less and less of the opportunity to, to rely on. Uh, on members who are volunteers on call, as well as per diems. Uh, it's, it's difficult to staff uh, and long range, it may be even more difficult to staff our, our, our public safety from the fire EMS personnel side of it. So we will eventually probably look towards uh, expanding our personnel that we have uh, full time. Uh, so we will have to find a way to house them because uh, right now we do have some bedrooms over there. I've been speaking with the chief and long range, we could be looking at adding additional bedrooms in there and uh, looking to have that take place within the existing footprint or uh, possibly going up. But I think uh, right now chief has had some pretty good ideas as far as working within the existing footprint, but also having to uh, uh, house and uh, personnel the uh, that service. Uh, and then two other items that we do have, one would be uh, as the council saw last night, a discussion on the town center at the intersection of Scott Dyer Road and Shore Road at Route 77. Uh, there may be some reconfiguration that may improve the safety of that yeah. intersection as uh, that is the one high crash location within the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, I, I speak of that with some experience as I contributed to the data that, can, that has made that become a high crash location two years ago. Uh, so I apologize for any impact it may have had on that statistic, but uh, uh, comes with experience. And then finally, the last item I have would be 
uh, long range plan for potential of a sidewalk on Mitchell Road, which is an area of great need and has been looked at. Could be fairly expensive to do because it's a tough road as far as the right of way, uh, but similar to uh, Shore Road, that would be an area that is, it's, it can be heavily pedestrian and there are a lot of uh, residential neighborhoods that are served by that street, uh, but that would be long range planning as well and that could have potentially a significant expense that comes with it. So um, I'd be happy to take any questions as I feel like I was vaccinated with a phonograph needle and it's been going on for a while, but uh, anything you'd like to ask, I'm, I'm happy to and if I can jump out of the share screen. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions if that, uh, if that have arisen. Or not. I'm okay with that too. <laughs> All right. do you, I, know do I, said, you, I know I unpacked a lot of baggage on that one. So. But do you want me to describe our debt, Matt, next, or what would you like? That would be awesome, uh, Marcy. Okay. If, uh, if you want to go there, okay. that would be fantastic. Thank you for that. Okay, I don't, I don't have a great visual, I've, um, so I apologize. I'm going to just try to talk slowly and clearly, and I'll keep it pretty concise because our debt structure is a little bit easier to, um, to summarize. We have a total debt on the school side of four million six hundred forty-one thousand three hundred and two. The good news is that by 2035, all of this debt right now would be retired. That's our final debt retirement date of 2035. The final issue that would be retired in 2035 is, would be the remaining amount for the school roof renovation from 2015, 2015. Now, we, it, for left on the books for that project is 1,538,112. So basically, um, and there's a nice little gap between uh, the debt that's retired, the last debt in 2028, and then 2035. So we're looking at the next few years of retiring a good portion of our existing debt. At any given time, we um, finance, debt finance, our school bus purchases, and we have an Apple lease purchase agreement that revolves every three years. So at any given time on our debt schedule without any of the other bond structure, we would have about 200,000 as a revolving debt. The other good news about that is they're short-term leases for three years each, and that's adding to our good bond rating. The more we have those small three-term lease purchases and the more we pay them off concisely, it's helping to add to the overall town bond rating. So that's the good, that's the good side of that debt. I would say for our school side, the, the good picture is that we are looking at um, a good financial position to continue, keep, continue on with our short-term leasing projects that keep our good debt going and the bond rating. And we're looking towards uh, just a short period of time now before all of the major bond debt from the past is retired. So I think that we're looking like we're in pretty good shape. Um, I know that was kind of concise um, without the visual, but I didn't know uh, if anybody has any questions for me. Yes, Jeremy. Um, thanks, Marcy, and thanks, Matt, for that overview. I guess um, thinking out ahead to sort of like school rebuild type expenses that are coming up, I'm just curious about some of the debt that the uh, um, school that's being carried on the school side and and sort of how that how that works and just out of ignorance on my end um so you you mentioned short-term leasing mm -hmm. um is is there is there like a debt ceiling that you that the school department shoots for or a debt load that you're trying to not exceed and then I guess my other question um the other question I had was around sort of interest rates and if you know mm -hmm. like uh, how that compares to the interest rates that we'd be paying on bonded indebtedness? I think personally right now, Jeremy, after reviewing the debt and um, having a, a year to review this, I would say that we are, I would not want to put us in a position where we continue any more debt financing for any, continue any additional leases. Um, we have the school revolving renovation fund that was a 0% interest rate through the main bond bank through the state. And that was a good way to get that project funded. Um, but I, per, I would say right now, just based on not wanting to, can, not wanting to push the debt uh, point any further, I think that we're at a point right now 
where that's where we would want to stay with lease purchase agreements for just the buses and for the computers pay and pay off the school revolver renovation fund and that would be the the limit at that point and that's I don't, i'm not including a major bond issue i'm just saying the short-term financing i think we are where we want to be and and just stay right where we are with our limit that's my opinion and and so that kind of lines up a little i mean basically the numbers that matt put forward right. have us right. show us basically on the town side having right. projected capital expenditures that have bond payments that that are comparable to the amount of debt that we'll be retiring over the period that we're projecting mm -hmm. out. Yep, exactly. essentially it's the same situation on the school side right right absent consideration of a large capital project right 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 outside of a large capital project the school side is in a good situation where we're not having to face any other different types of lease purchases at this point, and nothing's popping up. I'm knocking. I'm knocking on wood, um, but nothing's popping up for us. And the additional concept design that we decided to do short-term financing also was based on that. That we know that's short-term, and the plan is ultimately to be able to build and use our our cash balance, our fund balance for that. So there's a plan in place. I think that I would say for our school side, I say it's looking good with having a plan for our debt financing. Okay. And so, and again, also always continuing to look at it and, and fine tune it and have and board discussions about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One element of the school debt too, uh, Councillor Gabrielson, uh, that is uh, interesting to watch is that in four years, the, the lion's share falls off. It's mm -hmm. roughly about 200K. Uh, that is retired in 26, so uh, or fiscal year 26. So that's a, and then after that, there's fairly, uh, you know, in in comparison, fairly smaller payments that that are school bond related at at that point in time. So that's the big uh, big share of it there. And that's roughly how much in annual debt payments. That's uh, like uh, well. And it, this year it's like 409, uh, 439,000. That's yep, 419, 398, right. and then 228 in the last year or so. Right. But, and then the others are in the 65 range. Uh, the school renovation one starts to drop off precipitously uh, at about that time as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's those are the, the two big ones that are left are renovation financing and the school mm -hmm. uh, roof renovations and HVAC. So yeah. um, the renovations and HVAC one is the one that's the longest term. Yeah. It's, it's really going to help our budget. We're going to start feeling that. Thank you, Matt. We're really going to start feeling that relief for those big payments going down. Marcy, I have a quick question. What about um, any other capital improvements that the school may need um, or um, like vehicles, different things like that. Have you figured that in also mm -hmm. to this um, calculation? Right now, um, from what, uh, and we bought, and so far, I, I really am looking forward to us being able to do this long range planning because this is really excellent. I think this is great because at this point right now, the only thing that we have right now is annual school bus purchase to keep the fleet going. We don't have to do it this new fiscal year. We're okay for one more year. Um, but the only other items for capital, regular capital outlay projects that I know um, David has, uh, David Bagdasarian has on the forefront of his planning right now. And I, um, our superintendents making sure that our capital projects are strategically done maintaining the schools without being a major capital outlay. So it's just our regular capital outlay budget that we would have, um, you know, probably under normal circumstances. So nothing out of the ordinary, out of their capital outlay projects, painting, uh, carpet, that kind of thing. Nothing structural right now. Um, well, again, I'm not getting wood. Right, right. right. Well, and, and I know, um, Matt, that um, Public Works Put together their long range plan. So every year there's a loader or a dump truck or there, there's something every year that we purchase so that they, mm -hmm. it's not a flat, it's not flat what the purchases are, but 
every year there's like a major purchase and I think the fire department was putting together that same sort of thing. Um, Matt, did I didn't really hear you talk about our um, debt or revolving debt that way for public works. Is that part of it though also? Yes, that was uh, part of what I was what I was looking at there uh, as there was as they were retiring. I, I did have some of them, you know, one I had named in next year, for instance, the fire department, uh, the ladder truck one is what I said, but there are all other items that were that were purchased via that uh, vehicle, but it was that was the lion's share of that debt. Uh, yeah, a couple of years from now, we will have uh, full size dump truck replacements. Those will take place uh, all along as you go. Uh, this year, for instance, we have the front end loader that, uh, or uh, um, yeah, the front end loader that we were replacing. Uh, and then other items like that, that we will uh, you know, generally try to bring in if they arrive at a certain amount uh, annually. So it, it's, it's helped us manage, manage those uh, service needs as well. Uh, but the big, big, big ticket ones there would be, yeah, say dump trucks and other uh, like large, large apparatus that we do have that we have scheduled out in the out years for our capital needs. And, and we had talked about possibly a sidewalk project on Fowler. Um, that wouldn't be a bond though, would it? Um, is that something where we might be able to get some matching grant money? Uh, potentially there as well. You know, we would look at something like a safe routes to schools uh, type of approach there, as well as trying to coordinate at the same time of doing, uh, say that sewer expansion. Uh, because if you're gonna have the whole road torn up to do improvements, that would be an awfully good time to uh, not have to come back a couple of years later and break up said improvements to uh, to put sidewalks on top. So we try to combine that when we can as well. Uh, and, that, and and Council Deborah, I, I, I'm grateful for your question that way as well because uh, that's one thing that if we as we do go forward, that the town and the school uh, leadership should think about trying to coordinate debt service yeah. together at the same time, especially on long-term bond, bonding needs. Yeah. Uh, so if there was something that was gonna be a long, like if the shore road path is gonna take place at the same time that perhaps a large a large uh, project is going to take place with the schools, that would be a good time to combine all of those together, mm -hmm. uh, potentially uh, to, to try to maximize uh, perhaps a favorable lending environment, as well as uh, retired at the same time. So you wouldn't have all these different staggered deaths. And the town has done that, uh, for instance, with the, uh, the roof with the roof bond, uh, with the library bond, with the HVAC work that was done there at the schools as well. So uh, that's been one of the strengths of the town uh, financially uh, over the history of it as well. Uh, by being one entity, we have the ability to go out and pursue that versus other towns who are in perhaps like a an SAD uh, where they have the SAD purchases, you know, pursues their debt and then the towns do their, their deal on the side. So mm -hmm. that's one of our strengths. And we did do that with a lease purchase, was it last year or the year before? Um, so that did save us some money. Yep, yeah, with, with the two years ago with the bus as well right. within the package. And that's, you know, to be frank, that's one of the benefits of having closely associated boards where, uh, and, 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 and a good thing to be having, you know, having these types of meetings on a continuous basis or a regularly scheduled basis. So, uh, so folks are uh, well informed yeah. and, and can, and, and they can be, you know, having the finance meetings on a monthly basis has been great. I think that's yeah. helped us get through the budget season in the past couple of years uh, more successfully, as well as I think going forward, uh, it's, I think it's just been a, a really a yeah. fresh approach to it. Yeah, it's great. I think this is really good. Hey, Jeremy. So I'll ask the big question. Um, <laughs> so, uh -oh, what is it? <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I don't know exactly what the number is behind it, but there's a big number coming our way for the school capital side. Right. Looking at the school side and the town side together, does it make sense? Is there a point, you know, sort of, I understand there may be timelines that drive when that expense needs to occur based on the needs of the building and, and, and the needs of the, the school department, but is there a point where it makes more sense to plug that number into this capital program than others um, based on 
you know, debts that are being retired? Or is there an opportunity to do some refinancing as part of that? I, I, I guess, does anything obvious jump out at you in the timeline? <laughs> I, I think it would be great if we could work on a document for some long range planning like that. It, putting the numbers in like that, combining the two schedules. I know John has put the two schedules together, so it wouldn't be hard for us to do having the debt scheduled and then having some capital projects on there side by side just to, I think it would be a great idea to have some, a th at least a three-year planning model. And, and then I guess sort of the, the other question, and, and, and this is a, like a, a real question, um, I, maybe for, for Donna or Marcy, um, just thinking, looking at the sort of the chunks of, of debt that we have, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. on, at least on the town side, you know, the big chunks seem to come in like three to $5 million bundles. Right. Um, is there a way to structure the financing for the school improvements in a way that keeps us in that range? Or is it all, is it all one lump sum that comes on at one time? Um. Councilor Gableson, can you clarify that? Are you talking about if if new construction wasn't happening? You mean like? Well, so you know, I, I I'm I'm trying to dig back to numbers, and I don't want to say a number that's bigger than what right, right, than right, what right. We're actually anticipating. Right, but right. None of us want to say a number. number out of the air, and I don't okay. know if this is bigger <laughs> or smaller. If okay. there's $10 million in, ex in new capital expenses associated with the capital rebuild, is there a way to structure that so that we take on $5 million of indebtedness at one time I see and what $5 you're million saying. at another? I or see what does you're it saying. have to come in a $10 million chunk? Right. I, uh, yes, it has to be. Uh, uh, Matt, you guys, you can all correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the answer is that for the total, if you're going for a total project bond, one chunk. Otherwise, yeah. you have to go back to referendum at each time for that financing piece. And jump in. I'll I won't say anything more, Matt. If that's if I'm incorrect. And John John Q's hand uh, shot right up, so I know he's he's ready to speak on. He's this ready to well. say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for the question, uh, Councilor Gabrielson. Uh, once assume for the sake of discussion, the uh, school department goes out for a single referendum question or the estimated total cost of the project. Typically, you might do a series of bond anticipation notes as temporary financing, and then as the project winds down, issue a, uh, a single permanent bond, picking up all the bond anticipation notes plus all the final costs. That's what you would typically do. Depending upon how the rate uh, market rates continue to carry forward for the next number of years, it can be structured as a number of individual bonds so that uh, you're not banking that by the time you finish the project, the rates are going to continue to be low. Um, so yes, you, we could do uh, several different bond issues off of the same bond authorization and thereby structure it. The likelihood though is that it's still going to be a 20-year bond whether you do it as a single or you do it as several. Um, and so the fall off in the out years would be in years 18, 19, and then 20. So your savings could be in terms of interest rate cost, but not in terms of principal. Thank you. Sure. Matt, you um, you spoke about our bond, our ratings, the town's ratings. Is there an amount that we can borrow and continue to keep our rating? Or if we borrow a certain amount, does our rating go down? What are there, do we know those numbers? Well, I, I think as, as you go greater, you will find that there would be, you know, if you went to a significant number right now, I mean, obviously look at our percentage of debt to, uh, to what our overall value is, it's, it's, it's a fraction. 
uh, at the present time. I think uh, our current, or at least the last time I did a pre, uh, did a, uh, a look at this, and, and it has only improved since that point. Uh, our current town and sewer debt service to our, uh, our percentage of our equalized value is six tenths of one percent, which is, you know, at that point it was eleven, almost eleven point one million. And on the school side, uh, current school debt service is 0.22 or or 0.22 uh, percent of uh, equalized value. So both are in exceptional uh, shape when it comes to that. Uh, but there are limitations that have been laid out by statute. Uh, the total debt that a town uh, can have of all forms, and that would be town and school, is roughly 15 or is 15 percent of last full state valuation. But at that point, it would be almost 340 plus million dollars. Uh, that would be maxing out the, uh, It'd be kind of like doing a full refi and a full equity haul out from your from your home mortgage, and then uh, on the school the schools actually have a separate limitation that's been laid out by statute as well, and that's uh, ten percent of the last full state valuation, and uh, at the time uh, that I did that analysis it was two hundred twenty seven almost two hundred twenty eight million in, in value so that would be your full your full extent there so, uh, needless to say there is a significant. Uh, gap between where we are and what the what the ceiling is or could be. Uh, so uh, and to, but also Cape has its history of being exceptionally uh, solid as far as a, a bankable town for paying its debts. So uh, that that helps our, our bond rating as well. So all those come together. If you, like I know Yarmouth uh, went out to debt uh, to or went out to bond with roughly I think sixty plus million dollars two years ago. And uh, that did make a slight uh, adjustment to their debt, but uh, speaking with the manager, it it, it might have been in the, you know a couple of basis points type of impact on their on their overall rate that they paid. So it wasn't a, a, a let's just say a monetary albatross uh, weighing them down. So they did fairly well there, but we have a significant ways to go at this point in time. So it's something to consider, but at this point, it's not a, not a great a, a deal breaker. Hey, Nicole. Yeah, I just wanted to, while you're explaining, just what are the impacts if our bond rating did go down and it would be that our like interest rates on future borrowing could be higher, but we should get back to where we were if we're paying our debts and everything. And if we're doing this long range planning to see what we might have to borrow later, like you've already said, you know, kind of lump what you can together at the same time. So thank you. No, thanks. And uh, I know John Q has a has a lifetime of experience in the banking industry and is a great asset. So what you got there, Mr. Q? Uh, a further answer to Councillor Devereaux. The uh, bond rating is not simply uh, set by your debt load. There are a number of factors that go in. Included in that is, debt, is uh, tax collections. And our tax collection is nearly 100% and has been for a number of years. That's a very good thing. Secondly, they look at your equity, your fund balance. Uh, our fund balance has been strong and we just uh, increased the uh, target to 1.5 times um, of one month of, uh, of revenues. So as we build that up, that's another strong indication uh, of our financial position. Um, so there, there are a number of issues. Yes, uh, if you borrow excessively, you don't have a plan. Um, the credit rating agencies were not a, made aware that you had a plan of what your future is going to look like. That will have a negative impact. But as this step of developing a long-term plan and planning out borrowing and paying for that long-term capital plan will have a very positive impact on the credit rating, rating agencies as we move forward. Any uh, any other questions or thoughts? I know there's a lot unpacked. Uh, so obviously, uh, myself, John, Marcy, 
uh, not to speak for Marcy, but uh, I, I can speak somewhat for John. Uh, we're happy to uh, answer yeah, any questions that do come forward uh, on this as well. There's a lot to look at there and uh, other areas we're happy to happy to assist on and, and in a going forward fashion as well as mm -hmm. as uh, those on the building committee know, uh, you know we, we've done some pro projections regarding uh, impact to taxpayers on certain levels of, uh, of indebtedness and uh, based on mill rates and uh, on the uh, average and median homes. So that may be useful in the future as well uh, as you do uh, want to consider uh, long-term impacts or at least near-term impacts as well. So uh, we have that uh, arrow in our quiver if uh, that's needed to be looked at as well uh, in future times. So, um, and uh, the other thing I, I, I neglected to say was uh, uh, hi to Chris Record, our new superintendent. I know uh, uh, looking forward to working with Chris as well. So uh, you get a preview of coming attractions tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you everyone. It's uh, nice to be here. I appreciate being invited and I've learned a lot already. So thank you very much. And, and, and then also Dave Bagdasarian, who uh, hopefully all know is our, will be our new facilities director, uh, effective as of July 1st. So uh, a lot of this will come, uh, come into his uh, arena in the, in the near term as well, and uh, some of the, also the ongoing capital needs. So we're looking forward to having David come on uh, and, and filling the shoes left by Perry. So uh, very, very excited to work with Dave. Thank you. Look forward to working with, working with all of you. If there if there aren't any more areas of, of concern, I know the council had a, a, a an extended period of time out last night, <laughs> courtesy of the manager. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if uh, if we if we are good to good to wrap up, I'm comfortable with that too. Just just a quick question, Matt, on next steps for any of this. Is there a you know sort of a regular check in or reporting you plan to do on this, or where do we where do we take it from here? I think this is something that we may want to look, you know, circle back on uh, like late fall, perhaps, uh, to start oh. that in, in advance of, uh, you know, in, in advance of budget season, but well in advance of that, you know, probably after after school starts, maybe October would be a good time to come back sure. together okay. yep. to, uh, to think about having that conversation or at least continue that conversation. I know finance, uh, both finance chairs and, and, and school board and council chairs uh, get together with uh, with uh, leadership as well uh, to discuss ongoing uh, items throughout the year as well. So uh, but I, I think that would probably be a good time to come back to that because the school may have more information at that point in time as well. So uh, there, there are things there that, that the picture may become more clear or have a little bit more sharpness to it at that point in time. Yeah, I think as you get more um, information from the architects as the um, design phase goes on and um, you do get, more definite information about costs and it will be important to continually meet uh, to talk about that and how it fits into the grand scheme. And, and Cindy, to update you and everyone else, I'm meeting with the architectural firm in early July to get myself up to speed. So that will help as well, I think. Thank you. Yes, you're very welcome. Hey, Nicole. Yeah, I was thinking along the lines of next steps because I would like to see that kind of draft um, model of what the um, debt service could look like year after year if taken out on this year. Here's what it would look like. And obviously we need numbers for that. And I was wondering where that design process will be. Um, I also am cognizant that we're going to need to have a long um, educational and informational and engagement campaign with citizens on this. And so the earlier we can start talking about what what it means for CAVE to be at the bond rating it's at, what you know the decisions we've made as a town have been very strong to position us in such a great position for something like this. I think that we need to start thinking about that plan now and um, you know, waiting till the fall to discuss this again. I, I just think we should be starting to talk about it sooner with citizens, um, even if it's just a little bit of information every now and then. But I, I just don't want to get into a situation where we're suddenly a number is out there before they understand some of the baseline behind the number and what, what that means for impact as a town, like the things about the, our valuation and how, how much debt we have right now. And 
I know numbers can go over some people's heads. So someone who's probably a little bit better at uh, making the numbers sound more flowery or understanding. I just think that that's something we need to get started on sooner rather than later. And on, on some of that, I think uh, the, the, you know, there's, there's an element that from the school and the school board side that is theirs for, re, for reporting on that uh, to come back as that evolves, I think, versus on, on the town side. But I, I, don't, I think that's an excellent point as well, uh, for sure, because I think you want, you want to uh, overwhelm with information when you're looking at a fairly significant investment. Right. And I, Don, I think you and I touched on this at one point, and you mentioned that as part of, you know, when when we do have the the firm engaged with sort of our, um, when we've got the design through the design phase, the the um, architectural firm would also provide some input into um, education around the bond, and or there were mm -hmm. consultants that yeah. would provide some of that for us too. Yes. Yes, Might be a good idea to do kind of a, a state of the town or something report um, sooner than later, uh, town and school and and line up the bonds and the retiring bonds and um, maybe have some kind of a public forum about that. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And I think, I mean, the other thing that's challenging, you know, anytime you're talking about a number that has you know, six zeros behind it or more. Um, it's it's hard to wrap. Well, I don't know. I don't deal with numbers like that on an everyday basis. So it's hard for me to wrap my head around, you know, what they mean. So anything that you can um, do to help build that context, you know, I thought that the, some of the John Q's points around the, you know, sort of the amount of total indebtedness that's allowed, obviously we don't want to be shooting for that, but looking at, you know, this is a project that would be, you know, less than 10% of what our total allowable indebtedness would be is, is sort of a helpful piece of context in thinking about this in terms of scale. And there's probably some other ways that we can talk about, you know, these capital impacts that help um, make the numbers more meaningful to the way that people are gonna encounter them and experience them. Yeah, and just and re setting the stage, reassuring people that we're in good shape um, at this point um, before the numbers start coming in about you know for the any school building that we might be doing. And the community engagement side is behind the scenes being worked on right now. So the planning process for that, all of these things that we're talking about that will help. All of us, really. I think that this this is a great step, and it's a good direction. No matter what would happen, just to have this joint effort, I'm really I'm really excited about that alone. And I think that the architects and engineers have been working on a, just a, a portion like this out in the community for us, so we can start working. And I'll pass this along, and I know Chris will and Donna will. We'll all have this information starting, and just now that we have had the approval, we'll start moving forward quickly with that. And then um, we'll touch base, Matt, to see how much of engagement you want at this level too, one with the architects. And Phil, I saw your, your hand go up there. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have much more to add. I, I, just, I agree, I was gonna say something earlier. I'm glad Nicole brought that up because that's a very important part of this. And it was a, an important part of the interview process um, with the architectural firms. It was one of the categories we asked about was community engagement um, and education. Um, so um, in fact, I think this, uh, ultimate, the, the company we ultimately selected went back and, and sort of refreshed their, uh, their uh, ex expertise in that area because we asked for it. So I just wanna point that out. And I think, you know, I, and I don't wanna get too ahead, of, too ahead of this education campaign. I think we need to understand what comes out of the, the study and the conceptual designs this summer to get a better understanding of it, but it's gonna be a multi-pronged approach. It's not only I think getting under better understanding of the debt load or capacity we have, but it's also going to be a, an education campaign on the the building side as well. And what we're what um, what we learned that we're overpaying uh, because of inefficiencies and things like that. Um, so I think that's going to be a very big part of it. Is sort of uh, some savings. So they're saving clearly a big number, no doubt about it. But there's also 
a lot of inefficient uh, money being thrown at, uh, thrown away every year too. So, but I don't want to get too ahead of the the messaging on that. I think I want to sort mm -hmm. of wait to see what comes out of the, the conceptual design and that sort of thing. Awesome. Well, it looks like uh, due to the, uh, I think we may be wrapped up here. But uh, I want to thank everybody for taking the opportunity. I know it's, uh, you know, luckily the weather cooperated. It wasn't like mm -hmm. 90 and gorgeous and you don't want to be out there cutting your grass or doing something else. So thank <laughs> you for, for coming together on this evening for a really important beginning to a discussion. And uh, uh, I also want to take the opportunity to say uh, once again, thanks to Donna for all of her work. Uh, on the school side and, and with uh, and working with me over the past three years. It's been a pleasure and I know uh, she's on the home stretch. So uh, uh, this may be your last uh, joint meeting, so at least as far as I, as far as my calendar looks. So thank you for that. And uh, best Thanks, of luck. <laughs> awesome. Well, everybody else have, have a great night. And again, thank you so much and look thank forward you, to seeing everyone. you all soon. Thanks. Thanks, you guys.